Welcome, my house education and songs. I'm Dr. Brian, and this is Signs of a Good Preschool. Uh, before we get into it, I'd just like to say, please join our email list if you do. We give a lot of free videos away, but anytime we find a website, a link, or a newspaper article that we think is important, we'll send it out to you so you can see it. A lot of times this helps you, but we also send coupons out to our own products that kind of benefit the family. So signs of a good preschool. What are we talking about? Well, one thing is it should have multiple play areas, and that would be indoor and outdoor because you never know what the weather is going to be, but you'd like for the kids to get out and run around, and as my wife would say, you want them to run and rip. Uh, students use centers, and what we're talking about centers is, you know, uh, it could be tactile base, it could be play area. I know uh, where my son went to his preschool, they had a kitchenette one area, another area was the matchbox cars area, they had dolls, they had different stuff and the kids could compress through. And I want to say they had upwards to 20 different areas of exploration, little puzzles, magnets, all kinds of stuff. Anything for different tactile and learning. Uh, the preschool should definitely have an academic focus. And what we're we talking about, well, English, math, science, social studies. Now, I'm not saying on day one they're sitting there going, all right, this is a noun, or here's a subject verb agreement. So, but they should be doing the letters. They should be doing the sounds. The students should be equating this sound to this letter. They should be working with letters each week. And one thing that my son's school did back when he was in preschool was each week was a different letter. So let's say the letter was A. They'd bring a bag home. It was the A bag. And they had to go around and fill it up with toys or stuff around the house that started with the letter A. So it, he'd take an apple in or an apron or acorn and just different things that he could find. And he'd find the letter A that was a magnet that was on the fridge and he'd take that off and throw it in his bag. Same thing with math. You know, learn how to count from 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 and from 10 to 1 and... You know, they, they would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I realize at that age, they're probably not getting the full scope of what they're doing. But that's all right. They learn the ABCs, they don't get the full scope of it until later on in life. But they're still doing it. So you, make sure your schools are doing this. They should have science projects going on in the preschool my son went to. They were included in the science fair, and they were expected to bring science fair stuff in. Now that preschool was associated with the school he goes to now. So they were included in all this and we did something, and we did it on his age level. He helped us, he, we made ice cubes and then we melted the ice on different colored paper to see which one melted faster than the other. He had a blast doing it. Same thing with social studies. They were learning about the presidents for you know, the different holidays throughout the year and they had fun. It should be project-based learning if that's available. And a lot of times you can do the holidays or, you know, Mother's Day and Father's Day or Christmas, Thanksgiving, and these do these little projects. And we always got to laugh because you knew what time of the year it was for from his school because everything coming home was always based off that holiday or that season. And it gave the kids something to learn. And plus they're learning about their culture and what's important in their area. Most places are going to be no more than 15 minutes per academic activity. Now, there are going to be times where it goes into 20 or 30 minutes. I realize that. We went down to a play production at the library over the summer, and they sat there for about 30 minutes for it. So there are going to be times where it goes over that 15 minutes, but for the most part, 15 to 20 minutes is enough for kids that age because at preschool, they want to go run and play. And talking about that play we went to with the library you could tell who the little preschool kids were at the end of it because they were already starting to run around and get antsy because that's the nature of their age they, 15 minutes and then they've got to go but you could tell who the older kids and at this play it was up to like 10 years old so those kids were sitting there because they could handle sitting there for that time period to so know what you're getting um getting in with your preschool and then try to have a school that will do individual reading sessions and then the inclusion of art and music. And with that reading session, that's going to be two ways. That's going to be reading as a group and reading individual. And as a parent, every time your child comes home at night, there should be a reading session between you and your child. And a lot of times we'll say with, with our son, you pick the book, I'll read it, now he's starting to read. And we say with him, all right, hey, there, there's always some mommy-daddy words. So we're going to have to share the workload as we do it. But the inclusion of art and music is important because it's a lot um, it's fun to children and that's one thing you want to keep associated with learning is fun 
So thanks for coming here, uh, checking out our little program. Look for other Lighthouse products. We have stuff for, you know, taking this step from preschool to kindergarten. We have a whole guide of things to look for and how to help your child be successful at kindergarten. Click on the link below and sign up for our email list. By doing so, you're going to get four free webinars. And good luck in reaching all your academic goals.